Super Bowl is over. That means baseball season starts today. And we're going to start taking a look at position battles in Cubs camp, which is going to start later this week, or at least pitchers and catchers are going to report, and then the players won't be far behind. And the position to me that from our vantage point right now, unless the Cubs sign Matt Chapman to play third base, is the hot corner. So we're going to get into that. The Cubs options at third base, the guys you'll see in camp playing that position, all that right here on the Cubs Baseball Channel. Make sure that you guys like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Let's get this thing going. Go Cubs! Hey everybody, welcome to the Cubs Baseball Channel. I'm Mick Gillespie, at Broadcaster Mick. Fired up about spring training, even got my spring training hat on. Look at that little Cactus League baseball hat logo. We're here to talk Cubs baseball and start looking at positions that could be won this spring training camp. And right now, as we sit here, the Cubs have not signed Matt Chapman to play third base. There have been some rumors. You could probably get them on a short-term deal. And going into camp, I could certainly see them going, hey, you know what? We would not mind having someone that we could really just plug into that spot and take the position as some of our options get better. All right, well, let's start with those options. And I'm going to put on the screen first Nick Magical. You remember Nick Magical from last year? He was a mainstay for the Cubs. Um, played 61 games at third base. He's a utility guy. I put him more as a second baseman, saw him come up, watched him play before he had the hamstring injury. And I got to tell you, he was a player that I really liked. I liked him when he was with the White Sox on his way up. You just don't see a whole lot of impact contact guys. And I thought that that was his style. He could just foul off, spoil a lot of pitches. And with the pitch counts the way they are today, having someone that could have a long at bat is going to get that pitcher out of the game earlier. I mean, like, you know, they get up to 80, 90, 100 pitches and all of a sudden, you know, we act like their arm's going to fall off. A guy like this helps you get there, get those pitchers out of the game. Uh, he also makes contact. I mean, he, you know, puts the ball in play. Now, I don't think we've seen the best of Nick Magical because that injury takes a long time to recover from. But we'll know this year. I think if he comes in this year and is moving the way that he did before the injury, uh, then you'll know. And now he was hurt a handful of times last year for the Cubs. We saw him get going and then he'd, he'd go out with injuries. So you wonder if maybe he's one of those injury prone guys. But 61 games a season ago. Third base, uh, liked him at third base defensively just because he can move. He catches the ball. He makes the throws. He doesn't have a strong arm, but he has an accurate arm, and he gets he makes the plays. And I think when we start talking about some of the other options, you feel comfortable with him at third base. Even if on last year's team be, you get a lead and you just want someone that you know can catch and you put him over at third because some of the other guys weren't able to do that consistently, right? The downside to him is that he's not an everyday third baseman. He doesn't put up the numbers for that. Um, you know, he puts up more like second baseman numbers, middle and center field numbers. If it's a guy that's a Gold Glove type caliber dude, but 263 hitter last year, two home runs, 28 knocked in, got on base uh, a little bit, but wasn't anything spectacular, just reliable. And so he's an option. He's going to go into this camp and try to fight. Uh, for an opportunity to uh, to win that position, I'm sure. But I'm sure that the Cubs, on the other hand, are looking at him long term and thinking utility guy. Or you know, if they end up making a deal and getting a third baseman, you know, he may be someone that you trade. You know, that just kind of the bottom line on that, because uh, there's there could be other teams out there that are a better fit. You know, if you had second base open and you didn't have a Gold Glover like Nico Horner there then all of a sudden you feel a lot more comfortable with a Nick Magical, who I think is a really good utility guy. All right, let's change gears here, and let's talk about Matt Shaw. Shaw was the 
Cubs number one prospect, uh, excuse me, number one pick last year in the draft. And he's not the number one prospect, but he's one of the top prospects um, for the Cubs. And, you know, maybe top six, seven, maybe even better, depending on what publication. But Shaw played shortstop at the University of Maryland. Now, he played third base mostly as a sophomore. I think 18 of the 20 games that he played at third as a collegiate uh, were his sophomore year. and then junior year a couple of times, but was predominantly a shortstop. And I may, maybe a freshman year could have been the year where he played, you know, 18 games at third, but he's not a third baseman by trade only played three games at third last year under 40 professional games because he was just drafted last year. But there's some things that you really like about Shaw. First off, he is a gamer. He's a guy that understands baseball if you can play shortstop you can definitely play other positions and that includes second that includes the outfield he talked about how Nico Horner suggested to him that it's good to learn how to be uh, versatile and that's something that he's trying to do and, and this is his quote of actually taking probably 99 percent of my reps at third that's during the offseason so he's been focused on playing third base now uh, some scouts question his arm strength to play third base. And I think that they felt like that even at the shortstop spot, but the fact that, that he played shortstop and he did it well, led him to being a first round pick last year by the Cubs. Now he does a lot of other things. Well, he's a, he's a good hitter. He's a base runner that can steal bases. He's a really solid all around player. And he's a guy who the Cubs are going to want to get to the big leagues sooner than later. The fact that he made double A last year and played most of the season in double A helped them win a championship goes to show that the guy can win as well. So is he going to be ready to be the third baseman out of this camp? I doubt it, but you know, if he goes to spring training and turns some heads, there's, uh, you know, it, weirder things have happened. We'll just put it like that. And you're you're seeing some guys go straight from college, a couple games in the minors, and get to the big leagues uh, all in the same year. So for a guy to be drafted last year and make the major league roster could happen. It would just take pretty much a perfect spring training for Shaw. And Craig Council, the Cubs' new manager, would really have to like him. I think that's a part of it as well. But I'm a believer in Shaw, and I think when you draft players, you always want to draft shortstops just because of their ability to play other positions. And the Cubs have made a habit of that, and I think that's a good habit to make in scouting. All right, let's talk about this guy here. Uh, one of the newest members of the Cubs is Michael Bush. Now, Michael Bush got to the major leagues a year ago, and he made it with the L.A. Dodgers. Now, 99 MLB innings at the hot corner scouting reports question his glove and or his arm strength. I think Michael Bush is going to be a first baseman. And we heard Carter Hawkins mention that he wasn't going to play first for LA because they signed Freddie Freeman to an enormous deal. And that's his spot. And he doesn't really miss games. Right. So Bush had to learn how to play second base. And scouts say that he got better at it. Like he he started to get a, a, a lot more uh, range at second base. Uh, the footwork got better, played third. It wasn't spectacular at third base, probably the toughest of the positions for him. But he's got major league innings at that position. And it gives the Cubs an option here. If you Even if you have him at first base and say you use a guy – like Matt Mervis over there as well. You can always swing him to third base. He's got, you know, about a hundred innings of experience in the big leagues. That's a good thing. Or if you sign Cody Bellinger and Bellinger can play the outfield DH first base. Well, Michael Bush is a guy who is comfortable playing third base. And I'm guessing that he's the first baseman of the future for the Cubs, but it gives you kind of that option right now uh, to, to use him in some different areas. Now, is he a guy who you're going to feel like you're putting a gold glover over at third base? Probably not. Uh, but what you're hoping is that he can play the position well enough where you don't lose games. And then obviously he's there for his bat. And you're talking about one of the best bats in the Pacific coast league last year. 
The Cubs are hoping that that translates into major league this year with him. So, uh, but utility, probably a first baseman. He'll be in the mix for third. Uh, next guy up, Miles Masterboni. We talked about him a lot last season because I think we were kind of confused on why we saw him so much. You know, um, he really didn't do anything that that blew me away watching him. Now, he did have a couple of good games there. Uh, but, you know, in limited big league action, a 241 hitter, a home run, five knocked in, did play 29 games over at third, uh, start at 21 games over there. He's kind of a outfielder, infielder type guy. To me, he's a guy. He's just a guy. I, I was always confused on how you would go out and sign someone as a, you know, kind of as a free agent type guy uh, when you have like a whole farm system of players that you could use, you know. And Luis uh, Velasquez is a guy that I would think that you would start to kind of look at for third base as well. He's on the 40 man roster, came out of his shell last year, hit uh, extremely well a year ago in double a and then in triple a, but he's like a gold glove caliber type shortstop with a strong arm. So, you know, as this thing kind of progresses, maybe the fact that, you know, Vasquez is a player who um, has already, you know, proven that he can play shortstop at a very high level, uh, high enough where the Cubs had to put him on the 40 man roster He's got the type of arm that you could put over at third base. Also has really good hands. Maybe he's, um, you know, someone that you put there. Plus, then it gives you a really, really good backup option for uh, for Dansby Swanson. I don't. I just don't see Miles Masterboni. I mean, this is me, but I, I just don't see him as that guy. Now, a guy who played a ton of third base in his professional career, and someone that you're going to get a look at during uh spring training is bj murray bj murray the mvp of the double a playoffs last year uh came out i mean you talk about a guy that came out and made just all the plays and came up with the big hits in that championship run uh that was murray he's gonna get a championship ring at the spring training complex for it we talk about it here a lot. It's the first time that the double A teams won in 45 years. They wouldn't have won without this guy. Now let's just talk about him as a third baseman. He, he, he played third in college and then he he's played third as a pro. I mean, look, 125 games over at third base, a 948 fielding percentage. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of like when it comes to watching him play third, like, I believe that he could be a very good third baseman. It's just inconsistent. And that's the thing that you work on and you want to improve on in the minor leagues is coming up with a player's uh, consistency. But Murray has good hands. He's got good range. He's an accurate thrower. He's got the arm to make the throws. He's got the experience over there. Just probably needs to catch more balls, you know, a cut down on the errors. And he'll be in AAA this season, most likely. He'll be someone you see in a ton of spring training games. And if he takes that next step, I mean, he was in the Futures game last year. I think he's 24 years old. Uh, he's a guy who potentially could take over that job. I just think that the consistency has to get there uh, over at third base a little bit. Now, at the plate, He's got one of the best eyes that you'll see. He's not doesn't swing at pitches out of the zone. And I think that's going to help him as he goes to triple A. He, he'll be a really good triple A hitter just because he's not going to swing at a lot of the pitches that are out of the zone, plus better umpiring. You know, the, the, the pitches that they're going to call strikes, uh, they're not going to call strikes there. And partly because of the robot umpires, right? So you get the human element out of the way, and then eventually he'll go to the big leagues. Uh, and there's much better umpiring there than in the minors as well. So a guy that can get on base with the walk with a great eye, it, it, they normally improve as they go up through the system. But he's he's a possibility here for the Cubs at third and someone that I believe you're going to see a lot of in spring training. Next guy we're going to talk about is Patrick Wisdom. And Patrick Wisdom to me is just not a good defender. You know, and, and it's 
look, the 927 fielding percentage in his 61 games at third base is is just part of it. I mean, you could talk about having a low fielding percentage, but it's someone that gets to a lot of balls, knocks a lot of balls down. I just feel like with him, when the balls hit his way, I got to take a deep breath, whether it's at first or at third base. Um, he just doesn't have finesse. His hands aren't soft. He isn't able to, to you know, corral the ball. I, I call it uh, scratch gravel in my broadcast. You know, when you get the glove down in the dirt, pull it up, you know. There's just guys like Luis Vasquez you're going to see who have just amazing hands, like really soft hands. Like, And it doesn't matter where the ball's hit. It's like the, the hands just know where to go, right? Well, well, to me, wisdom's the opposite. Um, very, very, very hard hands. Um, I don't even think his footwork is good enough to play third base every day. They'd love to do that because what the, his ability to hit the home runs, you know, even with all the strikeouts in there, you know, if he ever, if he was like a, a, a Matt Chapman type guy at third base, if he was like a gold glover, you look past the strikeouts and you go, well, you know what? The guy's going to hit us maybe 30 home runs. He's always a danger in that line. It's going to drive in some men, but the defense is a weakness for him. And every time he's out there, and you guys know this, you worry about his ability to make plays. So I, I don't think that he's a long-term solution for that position either. One other guy that I want to talk about today um, is Christopher Morrell. Now, Christopher Morrell, when I looked this up, I had to look up his fielding percentage twice. His second base fielding percentage is really good. It's like 989 or something. I mean, it's, it's excellent, right? He can play center field. I've seen him do it. He can play shortstop, although he makes some mistakes over there, but he gets to a lot of balls. He has a strong arm, but he's terrible at third base. And I know it's only been 23 games, but a 911 fielding percentage is why the Cubs are saying, hey, we don't really think that he's an option over at third. That's a lot of mistakes. And sometimes the fielding percentage doesn't even tell you what, an asset or um, how difficult it is to play with a guy over at a position because sometimes it's not an error, but it's an error. You know, you're out of position. You don't get to a ball. They give someone a hit, but you're, you know, but it's it, there. It's a hit because you made a mistake, you know? Um, so a 9-11 fielding percentage mixed with maybe throwing the ball to the wrong the, the wrong base, being out of position, you know, uh, other stuff in there could really prove costly to a team. Now, I think we love morale. I mean, you can't not like Mr. Electricity, right? I mean, the, the way that he, he he's a great guy. He, he's constantly hugging everyone. He loves playing baseball. He's a great guy to have in the clubhouse. He's a very positive person. And the Cubs need to find a spot for, for Morrell. But this is why that 9-11 fielding percentage uh, is why when asked about him playing third, and then he did it, I guess, was supposed to do it some and played some third base in winter league, but it wasn't nearly as much as you would think. And that's probably because those teams have to win as well. You know, they're not like minor league teams. So for Morrell, the mistake here was that the Cubs probably should have had him playing third base coming up through the minor leagues, and he just didn't. He played shortstop, he played center field, he played second base, maybe a touch of third, but maybe like a B.J. Murray where you look at him and he's played 125 games at third. Had Morrell done that, who knows? Maybe he'd be a, a player that could slide into that position and help. But right now, it would be – a monumental achievement if he was able to go into camp, take over third base, and get the job done. And I, I'd love to see it, but I, I, I'm looking at this and listening to what the Cubs front office is saying. You know, they obviously feel like it would be tough for Morrell to pick to cover that much ground and um, and to have success this year as a third baseman, as an everyday third baseman. So, with all of that said. You know, you look at this position and it is wide open. And I'm guessing that that's why there's people out there that speculate Matt Chapman could be signed by the Cubs. Now, if you're the Cubs, you don't want to sign someone long term because you got to find a spot for Matt Chapman for BJ Murray. Um, 
but maybe that's not this year. And if they do sign Chapman, then some of these guys are expendable. And I don't think you would trade your minor leaguers. I would look at uh, Miles Masterboni. I would look at Nick Madrigal or even Christopher Morrell as guys that you could move if you had an everyday third baseman, just because, you know, I mean, think about it. All right, so that's where we are right now. You get in the comments section. Tell me what you think. We're, we're going to do this throughout camp as position battles progress. I love it. I love competition. I think it makes everyone better, and I think that that's what's going to happen with this third base job. But it's the most open position going into this camp as of right now when we talk to you. I want to remind you guys that the Tennessee Smokies are the Cubs AA affiliate. And they help present this channel to you this offseason, SmokiesBaseball.com backslash team store. Check out the team store. A lot of gear in there. Some really cool stuff. Find out for yourself, SmokiesBaseball.com backslash store. Thanks for hanging out. And we'll talk to you later. Make sure you like and follow. Give us a thumbs up. That means go Cubs.